Let's look at some of the interesting details of population dynamics, those involving time delays and the oscillations that they cause. So any kind of discrete population growth that is animals or plants that reproduce seasonally once a year have a built-in time delay because the population feels the conditions of the environment one season and that affects its reproduction in the next season. So the populations are continuously adjusting to changing conditions but with this time delay. So the population oscillates as it continually over and then undershoots the carrying capacity. If things are really good one year, many babies may be born the following year, even though that might be not such a good year when there may be a lot of mortality. So here are Drosophila growing in a tube of yeasty food where adults emerge from eggs in a cage. The, the larvae have eaten all the food and the adults die. And then the eggs they make can't grow until there's more food available. It goes up and the same process causes these peaks and troughs in fluctuation. So the magnitude of little r, the intrinsic rate of population increase, determines how what the pattern of population growth is like. If R is very small, the population will approach K steadily and stabilize when it reaches the carrying capacity. If it's greater than 1 but less than 2, the population will grow with damped oscillations, overshooting and undershooting at first, then overshooting a little less, undershooting less, and oscillating till it um, verges on the carrying capacity. When R is bigger than 2, the population may exhibit limit cycles, or if it's really big, chaos. We'll look at what those patterns look like. Here's a figure from our book with time intervals on the x-axis, population size on the y-axis, with uh, R less than 1, it smoothly goes up and levels off at K, our typical logistic population growth. If R is greater than 1 but less than 2, you get this damped oscillation, overshooting, undershooting, etc., etc., less and less till it verges on K. But if it's greater than 2, you get a repeating cycle of big oscillations, smaller, and then big again, and then smaller. So species with seasonal reproduction and discrete population growth don't feel the pressures of increasing density immediately. Their response is delayed. So if things are crowded in the fall, individuals may not die right away, but the reproduction in the spring will be less. And the length of the time lag can be described by the variable tau, this curly t, so that we can get a delay differential equation of population size changing over time, dn dt, is equal to little r times n, that old exponential growth, times 1 minus n at time t minus tau, that quantity divided by k, the, the carrying capacity. The response time of a population is proportional to 1 over the intrinsic rate of increase, little r. If populations grow quickly, if little r is high, the response time is very short. The ratio of tau, the time lag, to the response time, 1 over little r, or little r times tau, controls population growth. If that quantity little r times tau is small, then the population 
grows logistically, increasing to K smoothly. If little r tau is medium-sized, n will go into a damped oscillation. If little r times tau is large, then we get the stable limit cycle that never converges on the carrying capacity. So the amplitude of that cycle, po the population overshooting, undershooting, increases with increasing values of little r tau. If the population is growing really quickly, or with a long time lag, it will overshoot k by a large amount before it declines. Interestingly, the period of that cycle is always about 4 times tau, regardless of the rate of increase. Therefore, with a time lag of one year, you could expect peaks in population every four years, and that's what we see in many species. So here's some pictures of what we just talked about. A small r will give damped oscillations. Medium-sized r, a stable limit cycle, but then bigger values of r lead to chaos, which appears random, but if you rerun your model multiple times, you'll always get the same pattern of chaos. So these are population growth dynamics of populations that have discrete increase. I'm making a point about this because I think it's interesting that these complex patterns can come from a very simple discrete equation. They give you the same pattern every time if the conditions are the same. Therefore, they're not random. And we get all this interesting stuff because of density-dependent feedback of the logistic model growing to the carrying capacity with the built-in time lag of the discrete model. In the real world, the carrying capacity of the environment can vary from year to year, season to season. That's the stochastic model of population growth. Populations that grow quickly are much more sensitive to changes in the environment and they can track environmental fluctuation better. So I have a picture of an insect on arthropod here, butterfly. Populations with small r are relatively sluggish. That is, it takes them much longer to respond to changes in the environment. And in general, population sizes are smaller than for populations with large r. Here's a good old manatee as an example of that. These variations in the environment affecting the carrying capacity may happen seasonally, especially in the temperate zone. We can see this with winter freeze uh, alternating with spring and summer growing seasons. Both stochastic or random and periodic variation in carrying capacity can reduce population size, especially for things not adapted to be dormant and re-sprout, etc. The more variable the environment is, the lower the population size will be in general. And again, species with a high reproductive rate can track the environment, but species with a small reproductive rate average the environmental variation and remain more or less constant in their numbers. Contrast here, a ladybug with a fox. We talked earlier about metapopulations, and let's think about metapopulation dynamics in terms of population growth. Two kinds of processes contribute to their dynamics, the growth and regulation of the subpopulations within each patch, and also colonization to form new subpopulations and extinction of existing subpopulations when patches blink on and off. If there are connections or subpopulations are closer to one another, letting individuals move frequently between the subpopulations, local fluctuations are not noticeable, they're damped out. At intermediate levels of movement, 
The meta population is like a shifting mosaic of patches blinking on and blinking off as they're occupied and unoccupied by the species of interest. At low levels of movement, the subpopulations behave practically independently. And as a small subpopulation goes extinct, they can't be reestablished, and eventually the entire population goes extinct as each patch blinks out. In this figure, the state of California is shown in the small picture and the blow up here of the lower part of the state, where these, these spotted owl populations are connected to each other by the ability of the owls to move, but there are different distances, and you can see some of the patches are big and others are small and may blink on and off as owls can't make it and recolonize. So here's a model of metapopulation dynamics where the change in the number of patches occupied over time is equal to CP times 1 minus P minus EP, where, in other words, colonization minus extinction. The equilibrium size for the population is attained when colonization equals extinction. Blinking on equals blinking off. The equilibrium proportion of occupied patches P is equal to 1 minus E over C, extinction over colonization. So E is the probability of a subpopulation going extinct, and C is the rate constant for colonization. As we should get a stable equilibrium because when P, the proportion of patches occupied, is lower than the equilibrium point, colonization will exceed extinction and when P is above the equilibrium point, extinction will exceed colonization. In this model, the relative rates of extinction and colonization, E over C, are of critical importance. When extinction is zero, S hat equals one, and all of the patches are occupied. S, I guess here is like P in the previous slide. When extinction equals colonization, the number of patches occupied is zero, and the metapopulation heads toward extinction. So when zero is less than extinction, is less than colonization, you get a shifting mosaic of occupied and unoccupied patches with the value of S somewhere between 0 and 1.